Welcome to Writer's Digest Presents. Hosted by the editors of Writer's Digest, this monthly podcast features conversations with writing and publishing experts whose insights will help ignite your creative vision, hone your skills, build your platform, and get your work out into the world. Welcome back to Writer's Digest Presents. I'm Editor-in-Chief Amy Jones, alongside Senior Editor Robert Lee Brewer, Managing Editor Mariah Richard, and Editor Michael Woodson. As we record this, schools are letting out, graduations are happening, and summer vacations are starting. So today, we will be talking about books we choose to take on vacation, no matter when and where they happen. After a chat among the WD editors, Michael and I will facilitate a panel discussion with a few authors whose books we have read and enjoyed on vacations of our own. Hey, everyone. Hello. Hi. (laughs) So the first thing I want to talk about is what kind of books do you think of when you think of vacation reads? Is there like a particular genre, genre or setting that just instantly comes to mind? For me, when I think of uh, vacation reads, I'm very conflicted because uh, I know I've mentioned this before, but I've got uh, five kids. So usually when we're going on vacation, uh, vacation reads is like a very aspirational thing (laughs) where I think of vacation reads as that stack of books that I thought I was going to read. And um, we end up going with plan B, C, D, E, oh, whichever. Uh, <laughs> so, so usually what I end up reading for vacation reads is shorter stories, and it usually depends on what my children are into at the moment. And uh, uh, that's just the reality. Like there's this uh, part of me that would love to just sit down and read murder mysteries for my vacations. Like that's kind of what I always think of, but uh, just something to kind of sweep me away and it's like kind of more cozy. But uh, uh, usually what ends up happening is that, uh, especially lately reading a lot of like horror short fiction, uh, cause that's what my children are into. And, uh, and it's a lot of fun. And then we will uh, usually end up, because I love writing, we'll end up writing stuff and then reading each other's mm-hmm. stuff as well. Uh, just because we're kind of a weird creative family that uh, gets into that kind of thing. Well, I won't call that weird. I think that's cool. I love that. No. <laughs> well, yeah. I mean, I, well, of course we think it's cool. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just talking about the people that are passing us by. I, this is weird. And I know like I shouldn't uh, sabotage the vacation read thing right off the bat, but uh <laughs> I remember uh, going to a soccer game once, watching one of my kids play soccer, and then the, uh, my other oldest boy uh, was sitting there reading uh, a novel. I forget which novel he was reading at the time, but uh, somebody leaned over and was just like, well, what's he doing reading a book at the soccer game? But, uh, uh, you know, so so I don't know. Just, just an <laughs> aside... Things that we think are cool, like I know, like when I'm out <laughs> in the real world, uh, not everyone else sees it the same way. Yeah, that's that's definitely true. I have been that person who has been called out for reading in weird situations before. Yep, or same unexpected si- situations, I should say. Mariah, what about you? What do you think of when you think of vacation reads? Well, that's like also really tough for me. Um, when I thought about like what a vacation read is, um, I thought about what my mom read when we would go on vacations mm-hmm. when I was little, um, which was mostly just like whatever cheap paperback she had picked up somewhere. Um, so my mom read a lot of horror, a lot of mystery thrillers, um, that sort of thing. And I think to me, like a vacation read is just like whatever you like to read. Um, so personally, the books that I like to take on vacation, like my vacation reads are books that I have been wanting to get to. Um, but just like the nature of our jobs here, we do so much reading for work. Um, so like things that I have been putting off and putting off then I'm like, okay, I'm going to go away on vacation and I'm going to take you with me (laughs) and I'm going to finish you while we're, while I have dedicated like personal reading time. So um, if you know me at all, I read a lot of horror, a lot of like dark fantasy, a lot of YA. Um, so that's what I usually take with me. Mariah, I am exactly the same. Like my, I just 
when, when I think about like taking books on vacation or vacation reads, I don't gravitate toward any one genre. It's really just, I look at the list of books that I haven't gotten to yet because yeah, like you said, like the nature of our job, um, sometimes they intersect. Like what I want to read is also what I'm reading oh, for work, you know, but other times I'm like, I, I've had that book for a year and I haven't had time to read it. I'm going to read it now. Um, which is, which makes vacation reading weird because for me, because it's not always necessarily like light escapist uh, fair. It's can be like pretty right. grim because <laughs> it's like this book I wanted to read for a while. I'm in this beautiful vacation. I'm still going to read it. Um, so I really I'm similar. I just use it as an opportunity to to get to sort of um, reading for pleasure again. My my idea of vacation reads is almost entirely dependent on where I'm going and who I'm going with, or if I am staying at home for like a staycation because hello pandemic. Um, I remember when I was <laughs> in high school, I took a spring break trip with my mom and my friend and her mom. And I had packed, um, I don't even remember what classic it was, but it was like, um, like a Russian classic crime and punishment or Anna Karenina or something mm. like that. And when we got to the hotel before our flight, which was leaving the next morning from a town that was kind of far away from us, my mom saw that and sorry, mom, I'm going to out you on this one. She said, that's not a vacation read. That's not a good read for the beach. You can't take crime and punishment to the beach. <laughs> and so we made a trip to Target so that I could pick out some quote unquote acceptable beach read uh, for our vacation and I didn't like it I read it but I didn't care for it and I wish I had been able to read my crime and punishment or whatever it was so um so now I <laughs> and now I take exactly what I want which may or may not be um yes. you know too literary whatever for um for a vacation but if it's something that I want to read and I'm in the mood to read it, then I like, that's what I want to do with my vacation time is read the book that I want to read. Yes. Um, so I guess that kind of gets into a little bit of like the next question, which is my definition and interpretation of vacation reads changed over time based on that experience. Has it changed for any of you as you have gotten older or taken different kinds of trips or started traveling with different people? Yeah, I think for me, I originally thought of vacation reads as sort of light fair, kind of kind of like your your mother, Amy. Mm -hmm. um, but over time, uh, and and this is even with my my reality of of how it usually ends up going with vacation is, I look at vacation as something for me and something for fun. So like the older I get, the more I start to just not care what other people think about mm -hmm. my, what, what I'm, what I'm doing for, for the vacation stuff. So, so it's really just like, what, what is it that I really enjoy? Uh, what's going to make vacation more fun. And, um, and then that just comes down to, uh, choosing any genre, like, whichever genre is the one that that makes me feel like I'm, I'm having a great time and I'm escaping like in a way vacation is like even if it's a staycation it's like kind of an escape from your normal uh, nine to five or 24 seven or, or well, however you want to define it uh, and, and that's kind of how how I look at it is like this is the escape that I'm having mm -hmm. Totally. And I think for me, um, so I grew up in like a really small rural town and we had a really great public library, um, but it was kind of limited when new books would like new books didn't come in all the time. So when I think about um, the books I would take on vacation as a kid, it was just kind of like whatever I could get my hands on at the time. Um, and I think now that I'm an adult and I have access to things like Kindle, <laughs> uh, which mm -hmm. I didn't have growing up, didn't exist. Um, I think that I am just like more uh, deliberate in my selections because I know my time is going to be limited. Um, I have 
all of these books at my disposal. So what am I going to spend my time on? What am I going to take with me? Um, so I, I'm not sure if that's like a definition per se, but just like my access mm -hmm. to books is so like wildly different than it was when I was growing up. And for me, it's more just like my habits around vacation reading, because at least when I was a student in college and I would go on vacation because we were since I was an English lit major, we were reading like 15 books a quarter mm -hmm. that I would kind of need a break from it in the summertime. And then I'd go on vacation and I would consume so many books because um, I was like, OK, I got to got to get these in before the new school year. But the order I get, though. It, that's actually changed a lot too because what I've and I didn't know this until I thought about it a lot of times I'll bring a book that is um maybe a little bit dense and, and long because I just don't have the time to like get started on it even so a lot of times it depends on the vacation I think but especially if I'm going like on a beach vacation I might bring a pretty epic book so I can get a real like chunk out of it before I return because I know that I've I have nothing else in my way. Um, I, I want to get started in this. Otherwise, I'll never start it because I'm I'm intimidated by like everything else in my life that has to come first. Um, so I don't know. I think my definition of it has changed or it has stayed the same. But how I operate around that definition oh, has that's changed. Interesting. Maya, I'm a little bit like you now that I, I got an I had been resistant to e-readers for a really long time, partly because I worked at Borders and they were, you know, quote unquote, putting us out of business. <laughs> um, mm -hmm. But during the pandemic, when all of the uh, publishers started sending out advanced reader copies in digital form instead of print forms to an office, um, I bought an e-reader. And now that has that has significantly changed how I uh, take on what I take on va vacations when I travel, um, because there are so many, yeah. I can fit so many different options on that little device and still fit it into my purse. Um, I was just going to say that the funny thing about um, e-readers for me is that um, like I will tend to take my Kindle with me when I travel. Um, but then if I read a book on my Kindle that I really, really enjoy after vacation, I will go out and I will buy the physical copy of it um, just because I, I love to reread books, um, but I do think mm -hmm. you get a totally different experience with a physical copy. And there's just something more delightful about like going to the bookstore and knowing that you already love what you're going to pick up. Um, so I think that to, to speak to what you said about like e-readers putting um, print books out of business, uh, that's not the case in my household. Yeah, no. <laughs> well, and it wasn't the case at Borders either. <laughs> you know? <laughs> right, yeah. Um, so do your, Robert, you kind of mentioned this earlier. Like, do your reading habits change when you are on vacation? Do you find yourself reading more or fewer books than you do when you're, um, while you're on vacation versus when you are at home? I would say that it's easier for me to fit time in to read when I'm not on vacation mm -hmm. because I can claim it's part of work. Um, right. <laughs> and also, you know, like for, for me, I, I've got five kids, so uh, none of them agree on. There's never a consensus, I should say. Like mm -hmm. sometimes a few of them agree <laughs> on something, but uh we usually have to do a lot of uh, different things that different people are happy. And, um, and that cuts down <laughs> on, on the reading time uh, significantly, but uh, mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> I know that I read a lot on vacation. Um, like the, I think I average like maybe seven books a trip. Um, and it's just because uh, I am a very nervous traveler, so time spent, like, um, if I'm not driving, like, I am a terrible passenger, so I need to keep my eyes off the road, Same. or I'm going to be side seat driving the whole time. Um, and for some reason, like, <laughs> trains and airplanes also give me anxiety. Um, I think it's just... <laughs> I think for me, for it's a reason, control Maya. thing. Like someone else is, is 
taking me Same. somewhere and anything could happen. Um, but yes. like, I, I'm just a naturally fast reader. So um, the, the last vacation I took, I took a book and I was like, oh, this will probably last me like the first couple of days. Um, and I was done with it by the time that we got to our destination <laughs> uh, because like being trapped in the airplane, I was like, well, I'm just going to like really immerse myself in this text. Um, and it was also a super enjoyable read. So I, I know that when I go on vacation, I'm going to knock out like a bunch of books from my TBR list, which is always really satisfying. Uh, I do want to cut in that uh, this isn't vacation, but when I go to conferences and speak at conferences, mm -hmm. I have that experience, Mariah, with all the uh, traveling where I do read more uh, when I go speak in mm -hmm. an event. Uh, and I think part of that is like, I like to get to the airport like 10 yep. hours early <laughs> just so I don't miss my flight. And, uh, you know, so, so I'm... And I spend a lot of time, being an introvert, I spend a lot of time in my hotel room. So it's just, you know, I can watch a rock movie or mm -hmm. I can <laughs> read a book. So I usually end up going with the latter and read the book. Uh, I am not a particularly fast reader. I don't. I like to luxuriate in books. And I, that is, vacation is an extension of that for me. So I, I think I do read more book. It also depends on the vacation. Like if it's a beach vacation, I'm definitely reading more, not a ton more, but only more, I think, because I just have way more time to spend reading. Um, not that I'm reading particularly faster than I usually do, but if I'm going to the city or something uh, on a city vacation, I don't hmm. read any faster. I might actually even be reading slower than usual. Um, mainly because, yeah, because I grew up going on really like um, relaxing vacations we just like all got into the car and drove to the beach and had absolutely no plan and I also grew up with a mother who read voraciously she was a librarian and um, I just tended I grew up being like you yeah you can read all day but you don't have to like read like four <laughs> books today you can you can read this one book and and tell people how much you're liking it and stuff so I, I actually don't think my reading changes mm -hmm. much while I'm on vacation. I do read an awful lot in regular life but like you, Michael, the vacations that my family took um, <clears throat> growing up were the more like leisurely relaxing kind, like go to the lake and rent a boat and just sit in this cove for hours on end talking with our friends or in my case, sitting on the boat and reading. Um, so, you know, and we would drive there. So I would take a huge <laughs> stack of books. And I mean, we still do this because we like each other, luckily. Um but I and I still take a huge stack of books because we're just driving and it's fine. Um, but Mariah, I think it's so interesting what you said about you read on planes and trains because you're you don't want to you're anxious about the travel. I read on planes and trains or I will plan vacations when I'm traveling solo. I will plan vacations to places that have public transportation so that mm. I can use that time to read because I hate driving so much because I feel like that's wasted time that I could be spending reading. Yeah. Um, I think like totally we have started working from home during the pandemic and those two hours of commute time that I got back, I use for, I use for reading now, which has been delightful. The one good thing. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it's fun. So I recently took a trip with um, my parents. We um, went to, Italy, a rescheduled trip from that was supposed to happen in April of 2020. And they have great public transportation in Italy. So I took my normal large stack of books like I've done when I've gone alone. Um, I read one book the entire time we were gone for 10 days. And that was, I think, the the fewest books I've, I've read in that amount of time in years. Um, but it was different because I was with them and yeah. we were talking about things and the experience. And um, so my reading habits change sort of based on who I am traveling with, um, I think, more than more than the than the destination. And that sounds like a typical vacation for me, bringing the 10 books and <laughs> just having the, the one reading one. <laughs> Well, Robert, actually, can I ask you a question about that? My friend has 
two sets of twins and they go on their love language is vacation and they want their kids to see like the world and they're also huge readers so they go on vacation a lot and they read a lot on vacation and she ultimately ends up a lot reading a lot of mm-hmm. the books that her kids are reading does that uh, happen yeah with you? yeah it does I, I i do enjoy reading what they read just because then we can talk about it um it's one yeah. of the things that got me into reading when i was younger was to be able to talk about whatever it was that we were reading and there's something nice about reading something and not being able to share it with people and it's like kind of yours but i also find it a lot of fun to be able to like if i'm moved by something to be able to talk to somebody else about like what did you think about this and what did you think about that Uh, you know that happened in the book and uh that part's a lot of fun so how do you how do you plan your vacation reading do you pack up a huge deck of books or do you you know make sure you know where the local bookstore is and and find something there cuz i know i do i do a little bit of both well yeah for for me it is it is packing up a bunch of books <laughs> and i think i've mentioned before on another episode like uh my family we love going to bookstores and uh loading up on books which you know can be very dangerous on a vacation because we usually uh even when we take we have a like a nice sized minivan like even that like you know we can load it up very quickly with stuff so um (laughs) it can be a little bit dangerous but but like when when i go up to ohio for instance that we're a blended family we have two uh, i have two boys up in ohio uh one of the things that we always do is uh, go to bookstores and um they they look forward the boys in ohio look forward to it um kids down here in georgia uh look forward to it and um you know so so we do we we definitely do both um books that we bring and books that we seek out while um where we're ever wherever we're at for me i think um like when i was younger it we would just have like dedicated suitcases that like we would put all of our books in. <laughs> um, my my mother was also a voracious reader. She is a English teacher. Well, she was an English teacher. And now she's a reading specialist um, for a public school. But um, like the older I get, the less that I want to lug stuff with me. Um, so I usually do a mix, like one or two um, like physical copies of books that I've been sort of carrying around and am ready to uh, finish. Because I, I have a hard time switching. So I can do an audiobook, I can do an ebook, I can do a print copy, but I can't go from a print copy to an audiobook in the middle. Um, for some reason like that crosses every wire (laughs) in my brain (laughs) um so if especially if i've already started a book i will take the physical copy with me um otherwise i'm very lucky here where i'm at in maryland our county library system is phenomenal um got definitely got me through covid being able to check out um ebooks and audiobooks through their online portal um so I, I usually will take out a bunch of books from the library and download them onto my Kindle or um, if they're audio books, uh, download them right to my phone. And then they just come with me <laughs> in a nice little portable <laughs> package. <laughs> I do both. And the older I get, the more I tend to visit bookstores where I'm vacationing um, for a couple of reasons. One, I'm such a mood reader that if... I pack stuff that I just did, then decided I don't want to read this anymore. I'll just go to the bookstore and see what I'm vibing with. And because a lot of the times it ends up just being, it can be a really fun vacation story then if you find like what ultimately becomes one of your favorite books on the vacation that you're on. Like I remember, I, I've maybe told this story before, but when my husband and I were on our honeymoon in London, we had um visited daunt bookstore which is a big bookstore in london indie bookstore i think and it was like our first day there and i had seen this book grief is a thing with feathers by max porter and the cover is gorgeous and i'd heard about it and 
I talked myself out of buying it because I was like, I can just get this in the States. <laughs> Don't buy it. That's silly. And then we went our entire trip. And then the last day we had nothing planned so that we could just kind of like walk around and act like we weren't tourists. And we went back to Daunt Books and I was like, saw it again. And I was like, I'm just going to get it. Like it's, it's like 80 pages. It's not going to take up any extra space. And I want to say I got this in London. And when I went to check out the bookseller, uh, was like, oh my gosh, Max Porter used to work here. He's such a lovely guy. We're really excited for him. This is like a great book. And I was like, if I hadn't done this, like that wouldn't have happened. And it is one of my favorite books. It's such a beautiful novel. Um, and that was really like a learning lesson for me. It's like, go to the bookstore, wherever you are, if, and get the book because then that part becomes part of the story for you. <laughs> I was gonna say I had a very similar experience actually in London. Um, I was oh, traveling really? there in college. Yeah, um, but the the store that I sought out was um, Foils Bookstore on uh-huh. Charing Cross Road. Um, five floors, I think it was huge, like their equivalent of Powell's. But it's been there for decades and decades, mm-hmm. and um, I was just browsing and happened to be there at a time when uh, Zadie Smith's book on beauty came out. And at the, it was her second book, I think. I didn't know who she was. Um, yeah. I hadn't read. I was one of the few people who hadn't read White Teeth, which was, you know, a blockbuster when it first came out. So I, I was just attracted to this, the cover, the British cover of On Beauty. It was beautiful. I picked it up, brought it home, loved that book. Um and I, I read it multiple times since then. Zadie Smith became one of my favorite writers. And I don't think yeah. that would have happened if I had, um, you know, happened upon that book in the United States because the cover was so very different. So also, right, people judge books by covers <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um, or pick them up <laughs> by that moral of the story, I guess. But also <laughs> just going to a bookstore where something different was featured because, you know, she was living in London. Right. Um and was a superstar at the time. But I do try to, I mean, ever since that experience, I do try to, when I'm going to a new place, find, seek out a, an independent bookstore that, that I have, haven't been to before. So like when we went to Pasadena for the novel writing conference, mm-hmm. the last time I, Romans was nearby and obviously I had never been there. I hadn't been to California. So went to Romans, really cool bookstore all kinds of twists and turns and really interesting layout. Um, and I found some great books there. Same thing. There's a, an English bookstore in Florence that is tucked on this little tiny side street. You would have no idea it's there unless you are specifically seeking it out. But um, I wanted to know where it was in case, well, I wanted to check it out, but I also wanted to know where it was in case I didn't like any of the books that I brought with me. Sure. Um which I guess kind of leads to the next question that we wanted to talk about, which is how do you decide which specific books to take with you um, when you go on a vacation? Because I have a very elaborate system because I am a planner <laughs> by nature. And I'm also very anxious that I will end up without any books to read, which would be the worst. For me, what what I do is I kind of try to have like a, like almost like I think of it like almost like a business portfolio where they say, you know, don't get all the same of something. So like I'll have a poetry collection. I'll have uh, some short stories. I'll have something uh, a little bit longer. Like, like Michael said, like the times when I am able to get started sometimes like that's a good place to start. Um, like an epic fantasy type of, book because I can kind of read that first hundred something pages to kind of get to know everyone and then stuff starts happening when I get back home uh but but I'll I'll have like I'll just have like kind of a, a mix of different genres different types and then let the vacation tell me what I may or may not be able to read uh once we get there I think for me, um, it's just books that I've been meaning, like they've been on my mind for a while. Um, and sometimes that's because it's a new release and it's by an author that I already love and I'm really excited about it. Um, other times it's because a friend has 
recommended it to me um, and I just haven't gotten around to it. Um, and sometimes it's like, uh, I know that we've talked about our personal canons uh, quite a bit. Um, I know for me, like with science fiction, my personal canon is a little bizarre. So things that uh, like a lot of my sci-fi reading friends think are staples of the genre, like Dune, I've never read, um, which was shocking when I told them that. So the next time um, where I live here, there is a really, really lovely bookstore that has like a used section. Um, and do there was a copy of Dune that was like very well loved for like two fifty, so I picked it up and I was like, "You're next. <laughs> <laughs> the next time I am on a plane, I'm gonna take you." Um, so I think that it's uh, I I often will use it to fill in those gaps of my own personal canon. Yeah, I'm um, I'm trying to think about it because I don't I don't really think I have a plan, but I I definitely now that I think about it. I do pick probably one relatively ambitious book that I've been putting off because I just haven't had the time. Um, and then one or two other ones, if if I bring even that many, um, that are maybe less ambitious. And I remember the summer before the Hunger Games movie came out, I was finishing the trilogy for the first time and I brought... Mocking Jay in the car with me, and then like three other books, and I finished Mocking Jay before we got to Brutal Beach, which is like not something that I do. And then I was like, "Well, all I want is dystopian YA fiction now, and I don't have it." And so I went to the <laughs> bookstore and bought a couple of dystopian YA fiction books, and didn't read any of the other books I bought. So, or that I brought. So I, uh, I don't have a plan. I should probably have one. <laughs> <laughs> well. If you want to borrow my plan, it contains multiple <laughs> steps and contingencies. Um, wow. Okay, right? take it back. <laughs> well, I will say it hasn't failed me yet. So, um, okay. but it depends on if I am if I'm traveling somewhere by car and space is not an issue, I will take um, more books than I than actually is possible to read in the amount of time I have. So sure. if we're going for four days, I will accidentally pack eight books. Um, and I'm a fast reader, but that I can't do that. Um, yeah. And if, if I am traveling again by car, I will pack the ambitious book, the big thick book that has been on my TBR list for a while, but I haven't been able to get to because of all of the reading for work or um, whatever. If I'm traveling by plane, I am much more selective about what I pick. I end up taking probably the same number of books, but I they are smaller so that, number one, they don't weigh down my carry-on bag, but also I can put them in my purse for when I'm on the public transportation and I can just pull it out and read it as I travel. Um the second part of my little contingency plan is I always pack a book that I have read before and loved just in case one of my other books um, doesn't fit the bill, uh, ends up being a disappointment or mm -hmm. multiple of my books end up being a disappointment. I will have that backup book that I know I love and would be excited to reread again. The third part of my plan... <laughs> <laughs> is to try to take at least one book that is um, about or set in the place where I am visiting, because I really like um, I like learning about the places where I travel, even if it's a place I've been to multiple times. Um, but I also think it helps um, set the mood for the trip in my head, because I feel like immersed yeah. in this place. Even if it's not necessarily, um, you know, a book that's about a positive thing, I still feel like I'm sure. in this place. So um, the pla the lake that we go to, my family goes to in Tennessee is near to Oak Ridge, where there is the nuclear um, research facility. <clears throat> and there was a book about Oak Ridge that had been written by somebody from there. It was a novel, The Atomic City Girls, I think, not to be confused with The Girls of Atomic City. 
um, there's a there's a novel and then there's a nonfiction book. I took the novel because that's me. Um, and I learned something about that place that I wouldn't have otherwise known. Um, yeah. Or when I go to when I go overseas, I like to pick books that are set in that in that city. Um, which I guess kind of leads into our final question about your best vacation read recommendations. I have, I think I brought four. Um, but so if somebody else wants to, wants to start. For me, I'm going to kind of go back to, uh, what you mentioned there, Amy. I do like, as part of my diversified portfolio, I do like to have like stuff that I haven't read before and then like have some stuff that I have as a backup just because I can just jump in and uh, even just read passages that I know that I enjoy if um, short for time or, or whatever. Um, so uh, for me, those are the ones that I'm recommending. Uh, I will probably mention this book like a million times during the podcast over however long <laughs> we do this, but uh, <laughs> Uh, I love The Little Prince. Mm -hmm. um, it's just a book that I can read quickly. And every time I read it, I get something different out of it, uh, just based off of where I'm at uh, in my life. Uh, I love Edgar Allan Poe because I can jump in and I always bring a collection that's got short fiction and poetry. Um, that way I can just depending on where my mind is at at the time for, for what I want to read. And uh, related to that, there are, I like the best American, and I should also mention, I like the O. Henry uh, series as well, but like the best American poetry and best American mm -hmm. short stories. I like to have those types of anthologies around because sometimes I am short for space. I can just jump in to a poem or jump into a short story and, um, and those are sometimes really good. Now, I'm also usually trying to read novels as well, but uh, uh, those are the ones that like I kind of have as like my backup uh, vacation reads that like never fail me uh, if I need them. I love that idea of um, taking an anthology. It's I hadn't thought of that, but I think that's yeah. a great idea because not only are they those short bits that you can get into if you only have a short period of time, but in my, I, I think for me, they would introduce me to writers that I might not otherwise have read and give me more for my TBR list when I get home. It is such yeah, a good idea. That, that's one thing I like about it. Yeah. Because I, I, in my head, I can't get anthology out of like school mm -hmm. in my brain because we read so many <laughs> anthologies. Right. And I'm like that you can do that for yourself. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> um, so for, for my recommendations, I kind of broke them up into three different categories because I hope to give everyone a little bit of something. Um, so if you're into sweet romance, um, I'm going to recommend a Brush with Love by Maisie Eddings. Um, and we had Maisie on the podcast for our debut author panel. Um, but then also On Rotation by Shirlene Abobi. Um, this is the book that I read on vacation uh, on the airplane. I just like could not put it down. It's phenomenal. Um, when it comes to horror, uh, going back in time a little bit, uh, The Devil in Silver by Victor Laval uh, is a really great mix of like terrifying and funny. Um, and if you're in audiobooks, he reads his own work and he's phenomenal. Um, and also Certain Dark Things by Sylvia Moreno Garcia, I think is like a really good, <laughs> a really good mm -hmm. read when you have dedicated time to just like sit down and really immerse yourself in that world. Um, and then for shorter stuff, uh, The Elephant Vanage Vanishes by Haruki Murakami is a mm. really interesting, lovely collection. Um, and there are always like stories that I like to go back to, um, especially like if I'm in the mood for one thing and not another. This has like a really great range to it. Um, and then if you're into nonfiction, uh, Fast, Fierce Women, 75 Essays of Flash Nonfiction, edited by Gina Bareka, is a really, really great read. So those are my recommendations for today. <laughs> um, I'll start with my reread is a book that I is so short and I take a lot of places with me because it's one of my favorite books of all time, which is Tuck Everlasting by Natalie Babbitt. And it's the 
most beautiful first paragraph I think I've ever read. And it's takes place at like the height of summer. Um, and is a really like, uh, unintimidating book to pick up if you need something. Another one I think is really good for a vacation is clap when you land by Elizabeth mm-hmm. Acevedo. It's a book in verse, um, and travels between New York and I can't remember the location of the other one, but there's a lot of travel involved and, um, history and and culture i love that book i recently finished sex and vanity by kevin kwan and um that is pure escapism and beautiful italy scenery in the first half and it's a retelling of a room with a view and i thought it was really fun i've mentioned this book before on the podcast and it's my ambitious pick if you're interested in it it's poppy show by leone ross um kind of absurdist magical realism stunning book and then just kind of a classic which is one of my favorite books of all time is summer sisters by judy bloom um literally about two girls who go on vacation with each other throughout their entire lives and um no one does it better than judy Uh, for my picks um i realized that in picking them out it um you know normally when i think of vacation reads this is something i neglected to mention earlier i think i would tell you that I always take novels. I don't read nonfiction on uh, vacation, but turns out one of my picks will prove me wrong. But I will start with um, <laughs> if you are a, um, if you like genre reading on your vacation, um, I, I know that's, I do like to do that when I'm going to the lake or someplace leisurely. Um, anything by Jasmine Guillory, including Party of Two. Um, I love her romance novels, they are steamy. Um, but they are great fun, and I feel like the characters are, are real people. Um, if you want a mystery thriller, Winter Counts by David Heska Wandley Wyden. He, um, he wrote an article for our July-August issue last year in 2021. Um, but this is a fantastic debut thriller. I think in the meantime, he has won many um, awards for it. But the the second one in the series is coming out soon. Um, when I mentioned that I take a book that I have already read, almost always it will be an Ian McEwan book. Um, I love mm. Ian McEwan's writing so much. I think um, probably my favorite living writer, except remove the probably, definitely. Um, and so on my recent trip, I took solar and reread it, I think for the third or fourth time. And it's, uh, you know, the first time I read it, it was not necessarily my favorite of his, of his books, but the more I read it, the more it just, it, it's so messed up and cracks me up. It's the humor is, um, like secondhand embarrassment the whole time. And, um, and I just, I couldn't stop laughing. It's uh, an excellent case study in a very entitled man <clears throat> learning his own real worth, I guess. And then my nonfiction book that, um, that proved that I take nonfiction on occasion and, um, enjoy it was Gloria Steinem's My Life on the Road. I was traveling for alone. Um, overseas for the first time in the fall of 2016 and the this her memoir had just come out in paperback and I'd always you know admired Gloria Steinem liked her from afar but hadn't really read any of her writing so I picked this up and I was like well I'm traveling on my own I'm going on the road and um, I didn't realize just quite how um, how affecting this book would be uh, traveling hmm. as a as a woman overseas by myself uh, for the first time and having all of these people in my life tell me like, wow, you're so brave. Aren't you scared? And not realizing that I had been internalizing those feelings wow. until I started reading this book and feeling like I can, I can do this. This is, I'm perfectly capable yeah. of doing this. And I would encourage you to, if you haven't traveled alone, um, you should do it at some point because it's a very interesting and um, pleasurable experience. It's very different than traveling with someone else, which also has its benefits, obviously. So those are my reads. 
this has been so much fun. Thanks for talking about vacation reads. I am excited. I'm excited to read some of the ones that you've suggested. I've got another couple of trips coming up this year to make up for lost time. 